So one of the first ways you can notice that you are starting to touch into your, well, that you're starting to be awake, a little more awake. Well, we can, we, wow, big branch just cracked and fell. Um, or to use the language we're, we're talking about today, that you can tune into, that you can notice that you're tuning into your strength and your safety is you start to notice a little more beauty in your life. And you can reverse the order. You can try to notice a little more beauty in your life. And that will give you contact with your sense of safety and strength. So they're, they're related to each other. Why is this? Think about this. Why is this? Why, why does safety correlate with beauty? Why does strength and safety correlate with beauty in our life? And if you're noticing an absence of beauty in your life, ask yourself, why? Or, you know, to be more specific to the way we work here, can you notice what's blocking it? Harry, come here, come here. Go in there. Go lie down. So right now, and unfortunately, because of the way the light works, you can't really see, but I'm surrounded by trees and flowering trees and flowers. And there's usually a groundhog down there. I can't see it. And birds. There's often a lot of flickers and woodpeckers. Oh, there's a cardinal right there making a lot of noise. White flowers, purple flowers. So, but here's the thing. You, you all know this. You could be sitting in this environment and not be able to contact the beauty of it, right? Now the environment might help, absolutely. Nature is one of the, is a meditator for us. A little, it'll help us meditate. But many times I could walk through this in the same environment and it's here all day. Do I feel the beauty all day? Well, maybe not. Maybe not if I'm focused on my worries or my problems or I'm, if my heart is not open. Maybe not when I don't feel safe. See, if a lion comes out here and starts tearing through this fence, I'm not going to notice the flowers and beauty, right? Because I don't feel safe. My mind will zoom in on the te teeth and claws. I don't feel strong enough to protect myself from that lion. So my attention zooms in on the teeth and the claws and the slobbering and the, the roaring. But when I feel safe and strong, So the lion is at a zoo behind the glass, or I know how to handle the lion, or the lion's my pet. Then I can look at this lion and it's a thing of beauty, right? An unbelievable thing of beauty, surrounded by beauty. So, you know, in one of the, you know, I wrote a little book about, one could say it's about beauty. And, and one thing I, I one, one criteria for accessing beauty is that beauty is rich. It's got a rich amount of content. It's got variety and detail, and yet it's also kind of harmonized. When we don't feel safe or strong, we can't contact the richness of our life because we have to stay on top of the very dangerous thing, whatever it is, and our life becomes shallow. This is one of the great causes of suffering, if not the cause of suffering. If we're in pain all the time, all we feel is the friggin' pain. It becomes shallow. We can't contact the richness of our life. We can't contact beauty. When we start to feel safe, 
and strong and open, then we can take in the full experience that is being presented to us. And it doesn't have to just be nature. In a human being, you guys are also friggin' gorgeous. Friggin', that's a good word. <laughs> no, I haven't used that in a long time. But you are, there's so much personality in life and, and a physical beauty in each of your faces and you can all see that for yourself if you open and that's just a human being but there's your life is just full of beauty and it's not just artists creating beauty and it's not just nature it's everything Humans do like to create a bunch of purely functional things that don't have a lot of richness to them. They purely, like I'm, I put this on, a, I put the computer on this plastic crate and it's just a box and it's just clear and it's as, you know, it's as simple and functional as a thing could get. And that represents how the human mind kind of works. It wants to reduce our life to solving the problems. But the truth is, even when I look at this crate, if I really start to look at this crate, if, if I took this crate back to, you know, Mesopotamia and I brought it in, it would be a wondrous work of art. They would look upon it as, as a miracle. And it is, it is a miracle. The, the amount of knowledge and, and history of civilization civilization that goes into being able to create a thing like this but i don't even have to remember it to just see it now i'm starting with sort of the hard kind of things the things that look cold or you know but you don't have to start there look around your life and find the richness that is easily accessible the richness and that requires some at first some sense of safety and some sense of strength to be able to say you know what i don't need to think about that stuff for right now i'm just going to look at this tree or this person or this loved one i have or my dog or my shirt I have never done any drugs in my life, but I think one of the things people love about LSD or, or marijuana is that the, you'll see people just sort of like loving something, right? Because it relaxes them so that they can open to their present experience. And the human mind will, will make fun of that experience when we're not in that experience. Some of us will. Because it's like, ah, they're just like, they're on drugs. Well, no, they're actually starting to see the world from a sense of safety. Now, I don't think the drugs are necessary for that. In fact, they can get in the way in the long run for some people. Again, I'm not a super experienced, but it's not something, it's something that's available to all of us. The second we feel safe, really that's all it takes. Now, we can feel safe and our habits of mind will still draw us back into the same thing. We can feel safe, like, okay, I'm going to go watch a show, which is fine. There's beauty in a show. Or I'm going to go, you know, do the same things. But when we start to feel safe, we start to, our, our periphery expands. So now there's more options. There's a richer life, set of life opportunities. And I like to think of that, I think it's a good, a useful way to think of that is as beauty. It's contacting beauty. Now beauty opens, the heart needs to be somewhat open to see beauty, but as we immerse ourselves or bathe in beauty, it starts to open the heart as well. So it's a, it's a beneficial cycle. The more time we spend with beauty, beauty calms our nervous system and makes us feel safe. When we're able to see something beautiful, it makes us feel safe.
So it's just like the rest of our practice. We start with resource. That is what is easily available. So that is what feels safe and good right away. So we, with beauty, we could do the same thing. We start with what is easily seen as beautiful to us. What easily ignites a sense of beauty. Nature is one of those things for most people. But our loved one or our animals can be another one. Or a piece of music, right? Whatever it is, you start easily there and you sense what is it like to be experiencing beauty? To not be thinking about beauty, to not be figuring out beauty, beauty to not being even protecting beauty, to just being in the experience of beauty. What does that feel like in my body? What state of mind do is it require that I get into? And they've done these studies where just, for instance, going for walks in the forest is as good as therapy, right? And it's because at first, the first five minutes, you're just thinking about all your stuff. But as you spend more time there, the beauty bathes you. <laughs> and they call it forest bathing, but it's, it's really beauty bathing. Beauty is bathing you. Everywhere you look, you're getting forced <laughs> into beauty, you bastard, right? And it starts to calm the system. And one of the most common experiences at the beginning of mindfulness that gets people into it is when they start to taste wakefulness, they start to taste awakeness, they start to see beauty. So for instance, you just start to taste your food, the beauty of the food, right? You start to see the beauty of, of, of the cloth, right? You start, you're so present with the present moment that you're able to take in the richness of every detail. And awakeness has a, it can be described as, as contacting the beauty of your, of your everyday life or the life of your life, which is also rich. Here's another thing to think about. What the heck is the point of living? I mean, in a very human sense, it's to have a beautiful life, right? To have a beautiful set of experiences. The mind doesn't think that way. The mind goes, I need to solve all these problems. So somewhere down the road, I'll have a beautiful experience. <laughs> But there is beauty right here and right now. If you're thinking, okay, I got to do all this stuff to make $80,000 a year or whatever it is, right? That's okay. That's a fine part of life is having goals and trying to create certain things. But if it's making your days be empty of beauty, I know it's not worth it. I guarantee you it's not worth it. And they're not incompatible, but the mind often thinks they are. So you have to spend time being awake and then being awake to the beauty of your life to remind yourself what is, what the nutrient is. In many ways, we're all like sailors who didn't know about vitamin C and we're all getting scurvy left and right because we're just on these ships and we don't have a vital nutrient. We don't know that we need the vital nutrient because it was just given to us for free when we were back in the real world. Likewise with us, when we were bef before civilization, it was just given to us for free. We walked through nature all day long. We didn't have a whole bunch of problems to solve. Every now and then we did. We got scared. We had to run away from a dangerous animal or we, we had to go find some food. But then the rest of the day, we're just walking through nature, sitting in through nature, hanging out with family. So beauty was sort of given to us for free. But now we've gotten on this ship called civilization and we forgot to load up the oranges. But the good thing is all we have to do is pay attention.
you know, I've had some health problems this year. My, my Jessica had some health problems. A lot of people I know have health, health problems. We have COVID going on. So my, my feed on the social network is full of like all these alternative medicines, like, oh, do this or do that. Right? They're, they're like, this will solve everything. And these are mostly ads, right? The, uh, the alternative medicine that will solve everything is, is, is what I'm talking about today. Right? Now, I'm not saying it will solve every health problem, but it will solve the problems that the health problem causes, <laughs> right? And it will also solve a lot of health problems. Bathing in beauty calms the nervous system, relaxes the mind. You know, they used to do this one second. Harry, come here, come here, come here, come here. Just one second. I'm on a call right now. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. You did it. You protected us. You're so strong. You made me safe. So I remember I don't know, it's like there's a famous novel called The Magic Mountain, and I don't know enough about history, but it, if you think historically, there was always this idea of, ah, I'm sick, I'm going to go to a, a mountain retreat, right? I'm going to go due to this, it's a kind of a spa, right? That was one of the treatments in Europe, you know. And they thought it was the water or they thought it was the air or something. But I'm sure it was beneficial because it was just nature and not doing any work, giving us the space to be alive in beauty. All right, I love you all. We'll go into question and answer here. If you on Facebook would ever like to come, just come to the Zoom class and you can join us for questions and reports and discussions. Um, this is a by donation class. So uh, you donate what you, what you think you would like to whenever you uh, feel the need, feel the urge. Um, donations are welcome, not required. Thank you so much. Uh, love you, Facebook. Bye. Love you, YouTube.